back, bring in the navel, tuck the chin, gaze into the third eye, just this. Exhale. Inhale to chant for protection. Ad gede name, jagad gede name, sad gede name. your fingers into the tops of your hands. The thumbs are going to go towards the sky. Roll your shoulders up and down. Lengthen your neck. Tuck the chin in slightly. Gaze into the third eye. Breath of fire. Just keep up with that breath of fire. Pumping the navel. Just this. So I want you to breathe into the, it's the way you sound, it's the vibration of love that is behind everything that is creating the life you are. So take this in and let your soul sing this song to you. Just this, just you beautiful lady. Keep up, you're on the clock. There's something in the way she moves. Looks my way and calls my name It seems to leave this troubled world behind If I'm feeling down and blue Troubled by some foolish game She always seems to make me change my mind and I feel fine any time She's around me now. She's around me now. Almost all the time. Think of your grandmother, your, your mother, girl, your you sisters, and yourself. It's just the way that you sound that makes the difference. Quite a long, long time ago. should never go directly at anybody with her energy. You want a man to do what you want, you don't directly go at him. And I find that to be true with my children too. He says, you've got two arc lines and one comes from your heart. Wrap your love around them and guide them. Vibrate the direction and the healing. Be it. 
Let them feel their way home. Because it doesn't much matter what you say. It just sounds good the way you say it. Roll onto your hands and knees. Put your big toes behind, together behind you. Drop your spine. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Miss Veronica, can you wait in a moment? I'm gonna have you switch me up a moment. I'm not quite ready. Sorry. Okay. I thought I was ready, but I'm not. Keep breathing. You're doing two minutes of this, so have an experience. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. into your third eye. Exhale, press the spine towards the ceiling. Come to neutral spine. Sit back in child's pose. Hands what in a prayer. Back in our lives? Third eye on the ground. Fear. And sometimes when you take a very close look, you find out that your fears aren't exactly what you thought they were. Connect to the Divine Mother and listen deeply with your open heart. Today's the day Our everything is to fear. It's not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful, beyond measure. It's our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? But actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your Inhale, bring yourself up. Serve the world. Sit on your calves. There's nothing enlightened. Hands on your thighs. So that other people will feel insecure Excellent. around you. We are all meant to shine. As children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. Move the spine. It's not just Flex. in some of us. It's in all of us. And as we let our own light shine, we subconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others.
So it's holy work to move past your own fear. It doesn't just help you. It helps the world. Inhale, come to stillness. Just this. Breathing into the beauty of you. And how just being you heals the world. Place your hands on your heart, left hand then right. Press into the heart and make a nice circle. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale out the mouth. Ah. Inhale through the nose. Exhale. Ah. Awesome. Good. I want you to open up your knees a little bit. Put your hands on your shoulders. Inhale to the left. Exhale to the right. And you're chanting Sat Nam in your mind. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Keep up. Just this. Keep up. Sat nam, sat nam, sat nam. Just this. To find healing. Inhale your shoulders up, down. Mother Earth takes in the rain. Like your heart takes my voice. Let Press them up, squeeze the, all the worry off your shoulders. Exhale down. Come onto your back for stretch pose. So stretch pose is our favorite because it makes us so strong and dynamic. So you're gonna come onto your back, pull your belly button in. Reach for your feet, roll the head and the shoulders up, extend the legs, the feet are six inches off the ground, we're at the fire. Minute and a half, you're on the clock. I'll let you know when you're at 45, in case you're doing one leg at a time. This is igniting your divine will. This is what's going to help you be clear. This is what's going to give the voice current stability. This posture right here. This stretch pose. All right. If you're only doing one leg, you're halfway, so switch. If you're doing both and keeping in it, keep in it. You're almost there. Well, if you're halfway, keep up. You're doing great.
Inhale deep. Sigh. Ha. Inhale. Sigh. Awesome. Hug your knees into your heart. Hug them tight. Bring your nose to your knees. Breath of fire. So bring your head up as close to the knees as you can. Do not cross the legs. Cut them uncross. Breath of fire. Doing good. Inhale, squeeze. Awesome. Rock up and down. Come to seated. And we're going to begin the Diamond Kriya. The Diamond Kriya is made up of four things. Addiction meditation, Sat Kriya, Mool Mantra, and Maha Bound Lotus. We're going to do a modified bound lotus. The reason we're going to do the bound lotus is very specific because what it does, it actually constricts the lower chakras. And in the constriction, they release this big push of kundalini. And because of the posture in you're in, it sort of stagnates for a little bit before it goes the rest of the way in the heart. What it does is it illuminates and clears the heart. It fills the heart with stability, creativity, and divine will. It, um, the full posture is lotus, right? And then you're gonna take your hands and you actually wanna grab your toes. So when I practice it at home, I use a scarf and I, so it's like I have longer arms, right? Um, and then I come all the way down because I'm flexible enough to do it. I'm gonna walk you through what you, we're not gonna go here because most of us can't, we'll do it together. But anyways, when I do it at home, I'm coming all the way down and putting my head on the ground. Now when I do it, I always put something under the top knee because otherwise when my spine goes down, it's gonna be lopsided. And I always have a tiny bit of cushion here because I'm just barely getting my third eye to the ground. So I want it to be grounded. So when I do it, I have, can I have that pedal for a sec? So when I have it, I have something about like that and I bring it down. And then I just go. We're gonna do it like this today. We're gonna do pigeon pose because it really activates the root and the second chakra. So pigeon is going to take, doesn't matter whether it's right or left, you're gonna bring one, fold it here and stack the calf on top of it. That's it. Okay, we are going to grab our elbows behind us. Now take a moment here, take a deep breath right here. Close your eyes. What you're creating is infinity. You're creating infinity with your legs and your arms, the infinity sign. You just kind of fill it in energetically, okay? When we get there, you're probably gonna want to still prop up one of those knees because you're gonna be here a while. If you can't, if you don't have enough props or it doesn't feel good, then you're gonna stay up. It's okay to stay up in this position for the Mahat Lotus or you're gonna bring your head down if you have enough props going on around you, okay? That is the last thing of the diamond before the sound healing. We're working towards it. So we stack these energies as we get there which is the first one is addiction meditation. Because fundamentally, we are addicted to the way we think. The entire setup for life, for part of, like gravity is an addiction, you know? It's like, it like literally, not the gravity that the earth keeps us to the earth, but the, it's like this heaviness that we create in our lives that makes us feel stable, but it's really just donuts, right? Literally. 
donuts, you know? <laughs> or, you know, it feels like stability, but it's really just, you know, destructive relationships. But it keeps us busy. Um, we get to get angry. We get to have a lot of distraction. And when we think back to what Marianne, will, our biggest fear, she goes, when she started that, she said, I don't think we understand what we're afraid of. I think that is so true. It's, that's why we stay in the darkness, because it's comfy. We're not afraid. I'm not afraid to be an alcoholic. I got that down. I'm afraid not to. I'm afraid, what is God going to make me do if I don't do that shit? You know? <laughs> What's going to happen next? I'm afraid of how I truly feel. Because when the more we let go of our things that are we are addicted, and really the addiction is distraction. It's just take me out of me, take me out of me. I don't have to know me. I don't have to feel me. Because a lot of times, I know when I was really young, I met my first husband when I was 15. He was my boss. He was 10 years older than me, and he was he was an addiction. And then we did lots of addicted things together. I mean, it was just high octane, right? And when I got sober and I went to the hospital, I mean, it literally was like my mind came online and went, you know, it turns out I don't even like you. <laughs> that is so weird. <laughs> you know? um, it's over. <laughs> so, it, you know, we're afraid of that because some of that will come up. It can, and it can even be your spiritual practice. You may have been committing to something, you know, and then you kind of come online and you go, uh, no, don't want to be a Catholic. Or, mm, these uh, mantras do not work for me. And it's okay. You know, I, I'm not selling. This is the only thing. It's the only thing for me. I don't know what your thing is. But I do believe we each have to have a thing. And the guru is you. And inside of you, you do know. You know? Only you know. So we do the addiction meditation to take off the chains to habitual thought patterns so we can start to hear the residents, because your soul has a sound current. And the great thing about it has a rhythm, it has a sound, it has a purpose. And you know how like a dog can only hear those certain kind of whistles? Your soul's kind of like that. It's like whistling, you know? And you're like, huh? Mm, faintly I hear something. <laughs> what is that, you know? So we got to get these addictions out of the way, and then all of a sudden our hearing literally gets better. And you're like, and then, and then we have to be patient with ourselves, right? Because the nine times out of ten, the soul's going to go, quit your state job. It's a really good idea. <coughs> and I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know? Um, do you know anything about retirement and stocks, soul? Let's like talk to the hen. I'll talk to you later. But... You know, the soul will go, no, 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 I got, I got an idea. I, th I think I can make it work for you and for me. So let's, you know, let's still, let's stay in the conversation, you know. <laughs> so that's what we're getting to. We're getting to let yourself hear the director because the director is inside of you. One of the things about um, the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna and the battle with Arjuna. Arjuna's got Krishna in the, in the chariot. And Krishna basically says, you know what the worst human trait is? Doubt. No. Doubt is what he says in, in this particular learning. Doubt. And, he, and so um, my teacher said, so this is what doubt does. You know, you've got, you, we've got Krishna in the, in the chariot with us. Our soul's sitting right there going, you know. And, and it's weird. And, you know, when you read it fact for fact, it's like he's telling Arjuna, yeah, we're going to go on a battlefield and we're going to kill your family. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and you know, I'm like, ah, what? But what he's talking about, he's talking to Arjuna about, I want you to start killing off what is true to you and near and dear to you just because you think you ought to. You're not really looking, Arjuna, to make sure that that's the real thing that's calling you towards your purpose. So when the soul starts to say those outrageous things to us, the doubt sets in, and then this is what we do. We act like we're making a decision, but we're not. We're faking out our soul, but our soul's not faked out. It's like, oh my God, I can have that. And so what we end up, there's a fork in the road, right? This is the light, this is the destiny, and this is you and your same shit. And what you do is you take a lawn chair, and you put it right at the fork, and start eating bonbons. <laughs> this is great. I'm, I'm making a decision. <laughs> and then that's all that's happening. It's bizarre. So we do this. And then we do this next Kriya, Sat Kriya, because the reason we do that so often is childhood trauma. Sat Kriya 
helps us heal childhood trauma. And when and, and it does it without sitting on the couch, because I bet you've already sat on the couch. I'm already sick of my story. I've said it so many times. I'm like, even I'm like, shut up. It's just. <laughs> so, but it's but I had to say it because I had to hear my voice. I had to be honest. But once I've said it like 10,000 times, I know I've said it at least hundreds. I'm pretty much good now. So now it's like, heal it. So that's where this Kriya comes in. This is about energy. It keeps bringing the sat, the truth, up through the channels, up through the channels, up through the, just to give you, it's not like you heal everything today, but you're going to take a big jump. You're going to take a big jump. Then we're going to use our voice. We're not going to sing it, but we're going to say the Mo Mantra 11 times. 11 is a magic number in all kinds of um, lineages. It is mastery. When you start lengthening the diamond kriya, you can do it for 11 minutes. Today, we're going to do it 11 times, which takes just about three minutes. You don't want to have music. You want to use your voice, and you want to command the mole mantra. And the mole mantra does what? It takes away your fate so it can deliver your destiny. <coughs> and then the last thing is you go into the, the Mahabhan Lotus. It's like... It's like you go into the feminine cave and you just marinate. You just let your soul, your bones, your flesh, your chakras work it out. It's great. Okay, so we're going to start. So we've already had one person break a tooth with this. And this is, you know, common. So it's not, you're not, you, this is not dental surgery when you do um, the addiction. It's, sli it's tiny. It's like... Okay, so I want you to put your thumbs here and slightly squeeze your teeth. And you feel it just the slightest. If you have hurt molars or a cavity that's about to come or you think you have a cracked tooth, don't squeeze them at all. Just imagine. But if you're good, it's a slight squeeze. Now, you're going to take your fingers into the top of your hand. You're going to put your thumbs into the temple. You're going to bring the, the, the elbows back and the heart forward. Do not turn into this. This is not as good. You can see why, right? All right, so you want to be here. We're going to do this for five minutes. Each thing is going to be five. You can do it. Don't cry. Stop whining. You're the boss of me, and you're whining. How can that be, my teacher? Anyway, all right. Here we go. You're going to squeeze, sa, and then squeeze, ta, squeeze, na, ma. Okay, begin. Keep squeezing. In your mind, you are chanting Satanama. And I'm even going to give you a little mantra to help you do it. The universe is extremely willing to play with you. <laughs> and the you universe will play, play with you. There we go. Keep squeezing. Keep the elbows up. You're already 40 seconds into it. Stay with it. Squeezing the molars. Sa, ta, na, ma. Breaking the addictions. Breaking the sorrow. Breaking the habits. Break it now. You're doing good. Diamond Kriya, bringing you to the place where you can shine, where you can have clarity, where you can cut through the darkness and be who you are destined to be.
more minutes. Keep up. You're breaking through something big right now. Don't give up. Squeezing the back molars. This actually starts to rewire the mind. Starts to take a different journey through your head so you're not getting stuck as much. Keep up. Just go inside, take a moment, rest, breathe. Breathing into that love truly heals everything. That's what we're going after today, is love, connecting deeply to it. And breathing into this beautiful woman's sound current. Take a moment. And to be loved now, and to be able to love, because that liberates. Love liberates. It doesn't just hold. That's ego. Love liberates. When, uh, when my son was born, I was 17. My mother had a huge house, 14 room house. At 17, I went to her and said, I'm leaving. She asked me, you're leaving my house? And she had living in health. I said, yes, I found a job and I've got a room with cooking privileges down the hall and the landlady will be the babysitter. She asked me, you're leaving my house? I said, yes, ma'am, and you're taking the baby? I said, yes. She said, all right, remember this. When you step over my door sill, you've been raised. You know the difference between right and wrong. Do right. Don't let anybody raise you and make you change. And remember this, you can always come home. I went home every time life slammed me down, made me call it uncle. I went home with my baby. My mother never once acted as I told you so. She said, oh, baby's home. Oh my darling, mom's gonna cook you something. Mother's gonna make this for you. Love. She liberated me to life. She continued to do that. When, uh, when my son may have been five years old, my mother uh, would pick him up all the time and feed him. And I went to her once a month 
and she would cook for me. So one day I went to her house and she had cooked red rice, which I loved. After we finished eating, we walked down the hill and she started to cross street. She said, wait a minute, baby. I was 22 years old. She said, wait a minute, baby. You know, I think you're the greatest woman I've ever met. She said, Mary McLeod Bethune, Eleanor Roosevelt, and my mother, you're in that category. Then she said, give me a kiss. I gave her a kiss and I got onto the streetcar. I can remember the way the sun fell on the slats of the wooden seats. We were all not raised by a mom like that. But it's not too late to have a good childhood. So part of the roles as women, we play sisters and we play friends. We play each other's mama in darkness. And every once in a while, you're going to be with somebody where you know they need you to take their hand and tell them, baby, you got this. Don't miss your chance. Show up as the Divine Mother. So the biggest thing that Kundalini does for us is it gives us awareness. And in order to have that, we must have stability. Sat Kriya. Sit on your calves and heels. Yogi Bhajan says this, Guru Ratana. Every woman, every day should do this, at least three minutes. So let's do five. Get a little extra. All right, bring your hands into a clasp. And your left thumb is on top and your index fingers point up and your hands come over your head. So let's not scream Sat but let's be powerful. <laughs> so we're going to, I'm like somewhere between Mohan Raj Singh and Ratana right now. I'm like right in the sweet spot. Right? All right, so we're just going to say, when the navel comes in, Sat Nam, 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 set, 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 Nam set 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 
Nam Sat 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 Nam set, 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 nam set. Nam set, 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 nam set. Inhale. Squeeze the root lock, bring in the navel, tuck the chin, gaze into the third eye, press the, the tongue to the roof of the mouth. Exhale, comb the art field. Bring your hands down in Gyan Mudra, just this. Let the Divine Mother, the Cosmic Mother, comfort you. Let her speak in your ear right now and open your heart. Let her tell you what a great daughter you are a beautiful and wise, strong woman you are. That you are right up there with the Mother Teresa's, the Eleanor Roosevelt's, the Marianne Williamson's, the Michelle Obama's. You are, you are that quality, that strength, that power. But you're better because you're you. There's never been, never been anybody like you, and there never will be. Be grateful you are who you are. Bring your hands into a prayer and your thumbs into a sternum. Roll your shoulders back. I'm going to actually put the mole mantra up. I think I have that. We need that. Mm, that way we can all chant it. So we're going to chant the mole mantra. So let me get out of here. For those of you that don't know it, I think it's in my... Sense? Yes, it's right here. Okay. So you want to sit in easy pose. There we go. All right. So if you don't know, it's up on it's up on the chalkboard, ladies. My teachers know it because you've been chanting it. It's been, and, and when you chant something like this, um, you know, great stuff happens, but often weird, bad shit happens too. Why? Because there's usually some stuff in your life that needs to go, and you're like clinging on to it like the dead, you know, but you know, the universe is going to pry your little cold hands off of it and give you a gift, you know, give you the space and the freedom. So... We're going to bring our hands right here. Let me turn this guy down. Satangam, you need to be quiet. Okay. All right. <clears throat> hands in your heart. We're going to say the Mool Mantra 11 times, and I'll set the, the rhythm. Roll your shoulders back, gaze into the third eye. Ekongka satnam karta purik nirvo nirvair akomudit ajuni sabhong gur prasad jap ad such jugad such have such nanikahose be such 
down lotus stack your calves on top of each other grab your elbows behind your back you can stay up if you like or if you are prepared 
you can bring your head down in a bow and breathe. Go deep within. Feeling the spiral, the infinite, made with your arms and your legs, the infinity. Feel the surge of light coming up. If you decide not to bend forward, then stay all the way up. They're both fine, but it's kind of like one or the other, not halfway. Surrender. Just this. Have an experience. Feel yourself floating in the ethers, held by the Heavenly Father and the Divine Mother. You are the magical child. This is the Holy Trinity, justice. Feel your royalty, your queendom, breathe into it. Every one of us wears our crown differently, wears our wisdom differently. It's so beautiful. We're like, we're like wild flowers in the Divine Mother's bouquet. We're not supposed to be the same. Breathing into your relationship with the infinity. This pose and this practice really stabilizes our emotions, digs out our sorrow. Breathe. Breathing into this mantra, Sat Nam, Sat Nam. Love the one you're with. Let her have a relationship tonight with the infinite. Sat Nam. Sat Nam. Sat is changeless, it never changes. The truth of your soul is pure love. It's never going to change its mind. It came here to be you and to love it. To love it. Stay with it. Sat 
Exhale, slowly bringing yourself out of the posture. Slowly let your arms go. Stretch your legs out in front. Lay down for the sound healing. I sat there and I thought about her. I thought, suppose she's right. She's intelligent. And she's, she says she's too mean to lie. <laughs> so suppose I am going to be somebody. She released me. She freed me.